and in this video I'm going to be doing a review of the Nano Leaf Elements. I already have the Nano Leaf shapes in my living room and really enjoy the colours, animations and home kit control. However, I've recently updated my dining room and I didn't think the shapes would go. So when I was sent the Nano Leaf Elements to review, I jumped at the chance. The Nano Leaf Elements, while featuring the same hexagon shape, come in a new wood look finish and offer white temperature ranges from 1500 to 1400 Kelvins. They also work with HomeKit, Alexa and Google Home and features thread Porter router support. So let's find out in this video how they perform. Hi, welcome back and my name is John and this is HomeKit Authority. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. Now, I just wanna point out that Nanoleaf did provide this product for this review, but to be 100% clear, like all of my videos, I maintain full editorial control over the content in the reviews. The brand, in this case, Nanoleaf, I have no say on what I say about their products and do not see this video until it's released at the same time as you. You can read more about my ethics and a review promise. The links are in the description below. So starting with some of the Nanoleaf Elements key features and price. They retail at £199. Yeah, that's right, £199. And it includes everything you need to get started. It comes with seven light panels, a power supply, connectors, mounting pads, and a single control unit. Nanoleaf does also offer an expansion kit, which includes three additional light panels for £69. In terms of the smart home side of things, the element panels are compatible with Apple HomeKit, Google Assistant, and Alexa. The beauty of these is you don't need an additional hub, and they connect via either Wi-Fi or Thread. For the rest of the review, I will be using the Nanoleaf app and HomeKit. It's worth noting that the five gigahertz networks Wi-Fi is not compatible with the Nanoleaf elements. And also you can only attach 22 panels per power supply and 80 panels per controller. However, I do not see this as a limitation as most installations are going to be below that number anyway. So starting with the design, the Nanoleaf elements feature the same nine times seven inch footprint, weigh the same 208 grams as the Nanoleaf shapes oxygen panels. They also feature the same linker connectors and fix the walls using 3M DC pads, but that is where the similarities end. So unlike the Nanoleaf shaped light panels, which are white plastic finish when switched off, the Nanoleaf elements feature a wood-like surface, which is similar to laminate flooring. Although you can tell these are not wood, they don't look cheap and I think it works well. The Star Kit also includes a wood effect controller, which has a slightly different finish. This has got various different controls on. This needs to be attached to the side of any panel of your choice using a plastic connector. So now moving on to setup. Setup is fairly straightforward and is aided by the use of Nanoleaf's layout system in the app. You can pull together a design and superimpose it on the wall to see how it will look. I use this and it gave me a good idea of the overall size and design before I had to start sticking the panels to the wall. This for me is a nice addition as you get a sense of what the Nanoleaf elements will look like on the wall but it also saves damage to the service later if you had to remove them. Once you have the design decided the next step is to fix them to the wall. You start with peeling off the plastic back of the adhesive pad and fixing it to the first linker in place. You then fix the first panel to the wall and then follow the same process with the second one and then you level up with the spirit level. Then repeat the process for each panel until complete and finish off connecting the power supply and the control panel. Once you have all the panels on the wall, it's now time to set them up in your smart home. You can use the Nanoleaf app or the OMAP for HomeKit. And in my case, I chose the latter, but it's worth noting whatever setup you use, it will appear in either apps because HomeKit is the center of things if you're using Apple's smart home platform. Setup in the Home app is like any other device in HomeKit. You scan the code, add to the room, configure any automations, and then you're all set up and you're good to go. So now they're all set up, let's now move on to using them and start with the Nanoleaf app. Open in the Nanoleaf app and navigating the control tile gives you the option to turn the panels on and off. You can also adjust the brightness via control slider from one to 100% use range. And like the Nanoleaf shapes, the elements only support temperature ranges from 1500 to 4000 Kelvins. The elements can produce cool whites through to warm whites, along with a combination via Singe, which I'll talk later on about. I do feel the cool white does look better on the panels as the warm white looks a bit little on the orange side and makes the panels sometimes look a bit orangey and a bit cheap. The best bit about the Nanoleaf app, it comes with pre-loaded 
scenes, and there's about 11 that take advantage of the panel's light and effects feature, which is a combination of different motions of light, white, and warm. You can also create your own scenes in the app, but I found this was a bit long-winded and was happy with the built-in scenes anyway. And you can also download ones from the discovery tab in the app. As with the Nanalee shapes, the elements panels work with touch gestures and touch actions. I'll cover the latter in the HomeKit section, but the former lets you use various swipe actions to turn the lights on and off, dim, or brighten them and switch scenes. During my testing for this review, I found the touch gestures hit and miss. This is despite repeated attempts and various resets. Not sure why this was the case, but it didn't always work for me. Outside of the app and HomeKit, you have some manual controls and these via the control unit that I spoke about earlier on. Uh, you can turn them off and on, adjust the brightness, skip to the next scene, randomize and also turn on music sync. Speaking of music rhythm, which is a feature that uses the built-in microphone to adjust the light panels to the beat of the music. I found this works well, but unlike the shape panels, the music sync is better suited to, to slower paced tracks like jazz or romantic tunes uh, compared uh, to say R&B, dance or music like that, which was more suited to the shape. Whilst this is a personal preference and the latter is more suited to the shape panels because of the RGB color selection, whereas the elements white color temperatures favor slower paced music. Now, before we go on in the video, if you're liking this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up as it's really appreciated and shows that I'm making the right content. Also, don't forget to check out the rest of the channel. There's plenty of videos on HomeKit news, reviews, and tutorials. If you do like what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. Also, don't forget to check out our social channels Twitter in particular, where I'm constantly putting out new information about HomeKit and also Instagram, where you can follow the latest developments. Also check out the website, homekitauthority.com. And if you like this product and you're thinking about buying it, then there's some links in the description below that help this channel out at no extra cost to you. And these are affiliate links. So let's get back into the video. Now moving on to HomeKit, the Nanoleaf elements appear just like any other smart light device in HomeKit with dimming and color temperature in the Home app. So right in the Home app, you can control the brightness of the panels and adjust the color temperatures using a scroll wheel. I found this to be fast and responsive. And if I was not using the scenes that I found in Nanoleaf app, this was my choice to control them. They also work with Siri with commands like, hey, turn on the lights, and I found this worked fine and with no notable lag. As previously mentioned, the Nanoleaf elements feature touch actions to act as buttons for HomeKit scenes and accessories. As a HomeKit button, I can set an entire scene just by tapping a panel. Touch actions are configurable through the OMA and the Nanoleaf app. However, in the Nanoleaf app, you can only link scenes to button presses, whereas in the OM app, you can link button presses to scenes and other HomeKit accessories. But you first need to activate this in the Nanoleaf app then jump back into the O map. I set a single press to my dining scene and this worked consistently. I then set a double tap to turn it all off, but the long press, I found it's a miss and it really needed a lot of pressure to activate. Just a general note, the touch action require a fair bit of force. This is not like touch control, say on an iPhone or an iPad. So be mindful of that when you're setting them up and considering how to use them. As with any other HomeKit accessory, you can include the Nanoleaf elements in automations. During the review period, I used the elements with my Philips Hue dimmer, and again, this worked without issue. You can also pair it with a motion sensor, so if someone walked into a room, the elements would spring to life. You can include them in scenes, and the scenes found in an Alif app are also transferred to the Ohm app. You can also include these scenes in automations. So for instance, I used the calming waterfall scene with the Philips Hue dimmer, button presses. Now moving on to thread HomeKit support. After a recent firmware update, Nanoleaf has updated the shapes and the element panels to support thread. This means that both panels that can connect via thread when used with a HomePod mini or the new Apple TV 4K within HomeKit. While thread support is welcome, and will help in the overall thread network by having another device, I didn't personally notice any performance difference compared to Wi-Fi. However, it's the other end of the thread picture that really adds a value for the element light panels. The Nanoleaf element panels can act as a thread border router. Previously, you needed a HomePod mini or the new Apple TV to establish a thread network, but that has all changed. And now the elements and the shape panels can act 
as a thread border router. However, in my testing, it would only appear that thread devices from Nanoleaf appear in the thread network, as when I remove any of the HomePod minis and Apple TVs from my HomeKit network, the Eve thread devices would fall back to Bluetooth. And this has been confirmed after further investigation, it would appear that Nanoleaf has not yet implemented the iOS 15 thread network protocols. However, Nanoleaf has said they're going to change this and implement them, but they've given no timeline of when this will happen, other than it will happen sometime this year. So right now, the Element Shape Pals will only act as a border router for the company's branded products. And that's the time of recording this video on the 15th of October, 2021. Okay, so to wrap up this review and to give you my summary, when I first look at a device at the start of any review, I also look at what other options are on the market. But in this case, Nanoleaf has a unique product with the Elements, and the closest thing is actually the company's own shape panels. But both products offer something very different and suit very different types of rooms. I think in the right room settings, Elements are much more impressive than the color change in Sibylin. The texture of the wood grain and the edge to edge illumination make these a great option. I also like when they're turned off, they still look nice on the wall. The whiter temperatures also look better when used with the panels. The warmer colors can appear a bit on the orange side. I did, however, find them lacking in some areas. The touch gestures didn't appear to work very well during my review period, and the touch control long press was cumbersome. The Nanoleaf panels work well in HomeKit, and I like the scenes created in the Nanoleaf app can transfer over to the Home app. Although the touch gestures take a little force to make them work, I like how you can use the panels as HomeKit buttons. Thread support is also welcome, and when Nanoleaf updates the firmware to support the full iOS 15 thread network protocols, then this will make this device more appealing. Now, should you buy the Nanoleaf element, this is where we come to the price. Yes, at £199, they're on the pricey side. But when you put that into perspective, you get seven light panels, a control unit that can act as a thread border router. Yes, they're more expensive than Analeap shapes that offer full RGB color range, but I found you need to spend more on the Analeap shapes to appreciate the product and get the most out of the design options. Whereas I think a starter kit of seven is enough to make a statement in most rooms, but ultimately the subject of price versus value is down to the individual and you can only make that decision yourself. Now you can buy the Analeap elements from the company's own website and also Amazon. There's some links in the description below that help this channel at no extra cost to you and their affiliate links. So guys, that's the end of the video and hopefully you found it useful. If you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you like what you see and you want to see more content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button. And don't forget to follow us on our social media channels at Follow HomeKit on both Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.